Welcome to InTechnology Data Centre, my name is Paul Hone. The purpose of today's video is to show you around the data centre and explain to you some of the technologies we've employed and why we've done them. I'm very passionate about this data centre, I'm proud of what we've achieved here and the fact that we have what I believe to be one of the most reliable data centres in the world that is extremely efficient, extremely easy to operate and to be frank with you, the best place you can place your servers. We use a very efficient free air cooling system inside this data centre. Unless the outside temperature is above 25 degrees, we literally just use the outside air that we filter and pass under the floor to the cabinets. In order to maximise the benefits of the free air cooling, we capture the air inside these cold oil containment pods. This then delivers the air exactly where it's needed to the input side of the servers. Any cabinets that aren't being used are blanked off with blanking sheets and any cabinets only partially used have U containment plates. Fire is everybody's worst nightmare within a data centre. Here at In Technology, we have a Vesta front end and then a double knot gas release system behind that. The gas we choose to use is a nitrogen argon mix which is released by these heads in the event of fire. We've thought very hard about structured cabling in this data centre. We wanted to avoid the pitfalls of having cable of different manufacturers, of different consistencies and having no control over what's going on. To that end, we partnered up with Helm and Titan and we used their rapid net system throughout the data centre to deliver all our structured cabling needs in either CAT 6A and above or fibre. At In Technology, we're passionate about power monitoring. Unlike traditional data centres, we don't put anything inside your cabinets. We do everything at PDU board level and we're able to monitor your cabinets for ampage, voltage, kilowatts, kilowatt hours and power factor. And we do that for both the A and the B feeds and we can aggregate the feeds together. Every single output way is monitored both remotely and locally at the board for its power usage. The decision making on whether to take power from the mains or from the generators is the function of the Intelli mains and the IntelliGen controllers. Together, they decide what power is available, whether that power is of sufficient quantity and quality, and then decide whether to supplement with generation power or whether to use generation power only. The ability to self-generate electricity reliably is the most important thing that any data centre has to do. To achieve that, we have three identical generator sets here comprising of Perkins engines mated to Stanford alternators. We carry a minimum of 72 hours worth of diesel fuel based on full load on the data centre and each engine is a prime rated unit which means it can run 24-7, 365. The generators themselves are configured as N plus one, which again means that on full load, we require two generators to provide power for the data center, with the third one there as a backup in case one of the other two fail. It's no good having self-generation plant unless you regularly test it, and testing it off load proves nothing. So today we are going to demonstrate to you how in technology test their generators on full load. You can see on the meter here that it's starting to ramp up the kilowatt hours. We move over to the mains controller. You can now see on the mains controller that there is power coming from the generators and it's showing a negative power from the national grid and it's showing a positive power onto the data center itself. So this is showing that the generators are generating 1,600 kilowatts of power and are exporting to the national grid 1,286 kilowatts with a balanced power in the data center. At no time has there been any interruption to power to the data center. 